Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome back to another one of our comparison videos. We've of course got Gregorio with us for this Hello. and in this episode we're going to be comparing the two new middleweight adventure bikes on the block, the new kids on the block. Yes. What I've got here is the new Honda Trans Out which basically uses the same platform as the Hornet, you know that 750cc parallel twin motor uh, all geared up, bigger suspension, bigger bike, you know, all about uh, doing the miles. What have you got there, Greg? And I've got, uh, at the moment, the Suzuki uh, V-Strom DE, which again, parallel twin, all new bike. So direct competitors, really looking forward to seeing, A, if they're any good. Uh, they should be, they're not too heavy in relative terms, so they should be quite interesting. And of course, uh, work out which one we think is the one to buy of the two. Yes, so if that sounds of interest, grab yourself a cup of something warm or a glass of something cold, cold. because it we is cold. 29 on. degrees today. It's so warm. And uh, join us for a little bit of on off road fun on these new middleweight adventure bikes. Drop C, roll the intro. So what are we thinking to this uh, new, new Suzuki then, Greg? I must say, I like the grey and the yellow little highlights yeah, on it. Me too. I think the colouring on it is absolutely spot on. It really, in the flesh, it suits the style of the bike, doesn't it? That colour, yeah. the yellow looks amazing. It's got a little bit of metallic sort of yeah. fleck in it as well. It's... It has, yeah, in the sunshine. You can see it sparkles away, not too much. This looks really good. I, I think the uh, the red, white and blue trans out looks yeah. better personally, but I, I think it looks nice in this sort of satin, doesn't it? It looks, it looks sort of nice. premium, I guess you could call it. And I, I think it looks, yeah, it looks premium is a good way. It looks classy in this colour, actually. Yeah. Not everyone wants that sort of loud no, colour. I'll jump on the Honda. You okay. take the Suzuki. Let's do it. Let's get me lid. It's it's lovely to see a Suzuki with a proper TFT on it, isn't it? They've, they've, been, they've been so late to the TFT party, but they've come out of that dash and it is actually very nice. I mean, it doesn't have your multiple modes and all the rest of it, but... What do you mean, you styles? You don't need all that. You don't need all that. It's just clear, easy to read. Oh, it's got a nice bit of grunt to this. It's, it does sound very, very nice, this. It's, it's a, the sort of resonance through the airbox is unbelievable on the sort of when you, when you give it some. How's the uh, Suzuki sound back there? Uh, yeah, it sounds okay. It's, it's, it is, in fairness, it's quite quiet. So you don't, you know, it's, it's certainly not an engaging sound. It's fine. It's 270 degree crank, so that always makes it sound a bit better, doesn't it? But um, it's a little bit muted for me. I'd probably want to make it a, ta a tad louder, I have to say. What about if you give it a good handful? Does it sort of wake up at all? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the Honda's got a little bit more sort of noise to it, a bit more character sort of sounding, perhaps, the engine on this. This one also has the quick shifter blipper. This bike isn't isn't standard, you know, this has got a few extras on it because this one's nine and a half and the Suzuki is actually ten and a half list, but the Trans Out doesn't come with handguards, as you can see. The Suzuki comes with handguards. The Trans Out also doesn't come with the quick shifter blipper, that's an extra 250, I think, for that. Whereas the Suzuki it comes fitted. Trans Out also doesn't have any sort of skid plate or anything, and again that's standard on the Suzuki. So by the time you've added on those bits and pieces to the Trans Out, they're actually very similarly priced. So it doesn't sound to me like price is really going to be a factor. They both seem on the surface to offer very good value for money. And as you say, by the time you spec the Honda up to the same level as the Suzuki, they're pretty much the same price, aren't they? Let's have a little swap <laughs> over. <laughs> I keep doing skids for some reason. <laughs> you can turn off the ABS on the rear if you want to do some proper skids. <laughs> yeah, good. I, I think the V-Strong, the colours are really, really good. In the flesh, I mean, on, on camera, it may not look quite as good, but it looks perfect, doesn't it? It looks purposeful. I think the bright colours with an off-roady kind of adventure bike work. I like the headlight arrangement. I think it suits it on this style of bike. E even the stacked headlight on this, I think, looks it, it good, looks good it? on that, doesn't yeah. it? Because I'm not a massive stacked headlight lover, but I think on, a, on the adventure bike, it looks good. And I, th I think, I don't know, I think they're both not bad looking, actually. Is this um, your uh, tank bad? fanny bag no that's one of the optional extras from honda so this is this has got the tank bag it's also got the top box but i didn't bring that because i knew it'd be going to be is magnetic is it magnetic and it's bolted at the front so that's an optional 
The Honda's slightly lower, I'd say. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, isn't it? It's, it's, this is a bit wider as well, maybe. A little bit yeah, the seats wider, perhaps taller, are a little bit it? wider. I'll tell you one thing that I noticed straight away with the Suzuki, and I've noticed it on this, the steering lock's amazing. It's, it's incredible, isn't it? Both of them are incredible. You can almost turn it on, a, on the spot. It's, it's, it's really, really good. This is literally the first time I've ever ridden this bike. I'm not even ridden the Hornet, so I'm new to this engine as well. It definitely sounds a bit more characterful, the Trans Alp engine. Definitely, it's got a lot more character and a lot more noise. It's not noisy, but the, the Suzuki's very muted, isn't it? Oh, the Honda's nice. Yeah, it's good. It's um, It definitely feels to ride a, a bit more conventional. The, the handlebars are narrower, I would say, as well. So it feels a bit more road bike conventional than the, the V-Strom, I think. The V-Strom feels a bit more enduro -y, I would say. Yeah, the, the bars are definitely wider on the V-Strom. A good couple of inches wider, I'd say. On the trans out, the feet feel really quite forward. You feel like you sat at the kitchen table sort of position, don't you? But I think the peg's a little bit further towards your hips on the V-Strom. It reminds me of a little bit like the gold wing riding position the, this this bike actually yeah i think it's very similar also to the africa twin i much prefer the noise of the honda and i think if i'm brutally honest and again this is back to back immediate impressions of getting on the honda i think i prefer the gearbox on the honda as well it's um just feels a little bit more uh, professional and a bit smoother and a, just a little bit more it engages nicely i think the downshifts on the suzuki a little bit harsh yeah I, i'm with you it, it does lunge a little bit on, on the blipper doesn't it yeah it does the honda the honda by contrast is really really nice turn right here greg stop where you are stop where you Ooh. are if you can sorry i should have given you a bit of warning <laughs> so we've got a little bit of a green lane up ahead i mean which way are we going then straight, straight on. on straight on oh, let me go. Hang on, off go. He's, he's straight into it he's straight I'm, I'm into it <laughs> Up on the feet. Hang on, hang on, before, before, stop again. We just, we just put them in the gravel modes. Let's just put them in. Oh, into yeah. the, Because if you go to the mode, you'll find that there's a gravel mode. How do you uh, go to the bloody mode? Oh, mode. Yeah, there's a Rain, press the mode button. Gravel, got it. You got. Hang on, I've got to put this in gravel. Wait a minute. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. TC. Oh, you've turned it off. There we go. Gra TC gravel. Oh yeah, I turned the TC off. <laughs> TC <laughs> gravel. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also put the ABS in off-road mode as well, but that will do what, it for now. For what, you, I think you can on that. I know you can on this. How Hang do you on, do I'm, it? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure on that. Oh no, it's the ABS off-road. There we go. Oh, is it? Is okay. that good? Uh, that's just rear ABS off. Front's on, rear's off. I've done the same on this one. So they both yes. got the same thing with the gravel mode. Let's do it. He's on his feet. He's on his feet. Oh, the DE is actually very nice to stand up on. It's really nice between your, your fit between your knees is lovely. The, but the wide bars, I think, come into their own a bit when you're off-road as well. Woo! Gives you that bit of extra leverage. <laughs> you can't put this on the channel. I think we're absolutely terrible. This is and what you're right. doing, though. That's is... right. <laughs> <laughs> but if, if you're buying these sorts of bikes, I think this is what you need to be doing on them. Oh, because this, this is what they're for. Certainly the V-Strom, I think, is, is because it's got that extra suspension travel, because this has got the 220mm travel front and back the trans alps 200 at the front and 190 on the rear and the suspension on adjustable so i think for if, if it's off-road you're after this would be quite interesting to compare <laughs> compare them and see which is the uh, the most capable but uh, the, i must say the de is lovely off-road this the, actually the honda really it, you know it's pretty bumpy this you probably doesn't pick it up on camera and it actually doing a nice job of it I'm not doing a nice job of it. The bike's absolutely loving it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate these little ruts. I hate them. Oh, the, ru the ruts are the, the thing, aren't they? The I ruts hate are the them. thing. <laughs> it's getting deeper. My foot pegs are going to hit the deck. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, actually, the trans has got 10 millimetres less uh, ground clearance as well. <laughs> I'm going to have to go there, I think. It's getting too deep, that one. The pegs are down. Here we go. Try standing up on it. How does it feel to stand up on? Are you sort of no, not no, confident feels enough to stand up? No, no, it feels good. Honestly, it's the, the really nice foot pegs. They're nice and wide. It's really comfortable, actually. I'm going to fall off, but that's not the bike's fault. <laughs> ah, this is good. The throttle response is nice on the on the V-Strom when you're in the off-road mode, in the gravel mode. It's nice and soft. Yeah, is, is, I guess it does it on both. Is it? it softens off the throttle, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Woo! I'm getting the air down here. <laughs> no, there's air. Stood up. It's fine. 
<laughs> just air, air, air off the bike, not uh, air between your ass oh, and the seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel a little bit scared because I like brand new bikes and I'm terrible at this sort of stuff, so I don't want to crash it. But no, it's, it's, it's actually, it makes light work a bit. It really does. Yeah, and the throttle response is beautiful. The suspension's good as well, it's really nice. <laughs> now we've got to do pivot turns on them. Look at this, it's beautiful sea. You won't get to see this on the road. Look at this where we're at. It's incredible, look at, look at where we are. Gorgeous. <laughs> my, boot, like, my boots are full of grass. <laughs> They, they are actually very similar. The riding positions are different. Yeah. Suzuki's mega comfortable, mega comfortable, but so is the Honda, but the riding positions are really quite different, aren't they? I know, they're, 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 the, they're the same, but very di very different, aren't they? They, they are, but I'll tell you, the engine on that, it, it definitely, I definitely prefer the sound of the engine on that. It's quite engaging, actually. It's definitely more sort of characterful, isn't it? The quality for this price point is pretty impressive. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Nine and a half thousand pounds. It's a lot of bike for nine and a half grand. One of the advantages with the Suzuki, if you've got a separate subframe, it's all one piece on the Honda. So if you do have an off, you, you know, you damage the subframe, it's a whole new frame on the Honda where you've got a, you've got a separate subframe on the Suzuki. That's, That's a, a good point, actually. Yeah. You know the answer, though, don't you? Don't crash. Yeah. Which, of course, the famous last words will be coming off in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to jump on the trans out, see how that is, and you try the DE, Greg. Look at the steering lock on this, uh, look at him. Yeah, the steering lock is absolutely fabulous. Right, we're gonna go to the left here, so it's a little bit more rutty. I know Greg loves a bit of off-road, he loves a bit of off-road. I love it. No, I don't mind, I'm just no good. <laughs> I find this screen on the trans out too high for off-roading. I have to stand up because I'm sort of just dist <laughs> distorting. <laughs> it's distorting when I look through. Oh, is this in gravel mode, the traction control? It's crapping itself a little bit, trying to go uphill here on the gravel. Oh, duck! Well, I actually think the Suzuki's a little easier. It's a little easier, isn't it? it? It really is off-road. It just, yeah, it feels like it's enjoying it completely and it's looking after me. It's actually very nice. The, the tank is a little bit in the way of my knees, whereas on the Suzuki I could grip the middle of the bike much easier. Christ, it's narrow for me. Isn't it? <laughs> Christ! <laughs> I can't stand up, it's too low. I'm pleased I've got this big screen now, it's keeping all the bugs out of the place. <laughs> yeah, thanks mate. <laughs> and the branches, so I haven't got any handguards on this, so I've got to be careful I don't get the oh, front brake pulled. Take the hand varnish off. <laughs> <Get> the... <laughs> <laughs> this is what it's all about, these little adventure bikes. It's good, it's coping with it well. If you're not doing this, you should be getting a sports tour in my opinion. <laughs> if you bought an adventure bike, you should be having an adventure. Woohoo! Oh, it soaks up though, there's some tree roots here and that they're really quite harsh and the suspension soaks it up unbelievable it's a little bit more uh, a bit less forgiving i think on the trans out it's definitely more road focused the trans out if you're looking to do a bit more of this sort of riding it can do it i'm not saying it can't do it but the suzuki is definitely better that additional travel another 20 mil of travel and you've got some adjustment on that suspension as well i think the suspension is just better on the suzuki if you want to push it like this yeah, it was struck at the gravel mode when I was going uphill on the gravel then. It was, didn't what want to it? put any no, power really? down. It was almost like it's not in gravel mode. It's more of a road traction. Yeah. Yeah, you need to drive, don't you? <laughs> Bloody hell, it's a bit overgrown. That Suzuki, that copes with that admirably. Loves it, doesn't it? You know, if I, yeah, and I'm terrible. So if you, if you yeah, that's really good. Soaks it up. It almost just floats across it. The, the travel susp the suspension setup is really, really good on the Suzuki. A bit more, I was getting a bit more bounce on there, so bit, it's sort yeah, of okay. bouncing me up and down a little bit, whereas that was just the suspension's moving, not the bike on that, isn't it? Right, right let's hang go. on, we need to go back uh, in normal mode, yeah? Yeah, let's get out of this uh, gravel stuff. So there you go. Right, which way are we going? I'm going to do some sport. air. Straight on, mate. Straight on. It's quite funny, actually, doing a little bit of soft roading like that. It's actually quite enjoyable, isn't it? It's really good fun. I love it. And if I had these bikes, I'd want to do that on it, I think. I, think I it's would too. I think that that is a, a, you know, a whole other element of the riding experience of one of these sort of lightweight, middleweight adventure bikes. It's your traction yeah. control malfunctioning there, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I think I prefer the, the riding position on the Suzuki. I prefer the feet a bit further back, perhaps, and I, I prefer the wider bars as well. You know, whether that's so good if you go in traffic and filtering and stuff like that. I'm with you. I think I prefer the wider bars as well. 
because on this sort of bike it just feels more natural when you've got that you know the mm -hmm. this riding position feels more natural for an adventure off-roady bike whereas it feels a bit road bike like the uh, trans out doesn't it it does gives it sort of a bit of a oh the wheel comes up quite oh let's try second that's quite mad you need to do that to go over the logs and stuff there's a massive log that had no choice it's all just part of off-road riding there's a massive log in your pants now after the <laughs> off-road <laughs> <laughs> you're not kidding it's so comfortable this suzuki though oh there's a grouse <laughs> yeah. I, I've always said I'm not an adventure bike type of guy, you know, but riding around on that V-Storm and, and, and the Trans Alp as well, it's just lovely having that, just to be able to relax and just soak in the views and they're just so effortless to, to, to ride, you know, everything's so light, the clutch, the gearboxes, you know, they're just a pleasure to cruise around on, aren't they? That Suzuki is very enjoyable, but now back on the Honda, really happy to get back on it. As just, yeah, the bars are way narrower on the Honda. It's a good two inches, three, in three inches maybe. It definitely feels a more road bike um, ergonomics rather than sort of like off-road enduro ergonomics of the Suzuki. Yeah, this, this has definitely got, you know, it's got more of an off-road flavour, I think, this, isn't it? For, sh for sure, for sure. And it's interesting because both the bikes have identical tyres, so they're both running the Dunlop Trailmasters, so you can't even see you know, any differences uh, because of the tyres they're running. They're both on the same rubber, interestingly enough, which is a very road-focused rubber. It's not knobbly or anything. The Honda, just d jumping straight on it, what I like about it is the throttle response is definitely sharper on the on the Honda. If you just want to give it a little squirt of power, it's right there. Was I think it's, it feels a little lazier the Suzuki, I would say. Oh no, this is good. You're right. It does cut the power. The track it's, it's making it really controllable. I'm giving it loads of throttle. Oh, that's good. And it's just putting it down, is it? Yeah, it's putting it down, but it's doing it safely for a complete novice like me off road. That's handy. Yeah, there's a bit, of, there's a bit of spinach on the Suzuki. <laughs> a bit, a bit of Popeye. Yeah, this is great. Yeah, look, it's stuttering away, trying to save me from myself. <laughs> <laughs> You're miles away. You need to turn that gravel mode off. I think the, I think again, this is probably where the Suzuki's a little bit more geared up for the off-road. The, the gravel mode lets you actually get a bit of wheel spin. You know, it doesn't completely nanny you. Oh, the Suzuki is just lovely when the when the going gets gravelly and the tarmac runs out. And I just love the way it feels between my legs. <laughs> hey, I'm happy with the Honda, even on this. I, I think it's it's probably slightly less accomplished than the Suzuki, but it's still good enough, and you can still do it, and it doesn't feel like it's wrecking it, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. That's a good point, because sometimes you can take like a road bike down here, can't you? And it can do it, you can do this on anything, but you'll be wrecking it, is, is the thing, isn't it? Oh, let's get loose now. Gravel mode again. Wee ha <laughs> Oh, that's good fun. I think I, on balance, do. Bef I prefer the engine on the Honda. Do you? Yeah, I do. I think it's, it just feels a little bit more direct on the throttle. It's definitely a bit gruntier. And um, yeah, I think, you know, whether it is on paper or not, I can't comment. But I think in real world, it feels more characterful and a bit gruntier. So I'm down with the Honda engine and the gearbox is definitely better. And that's not to say the gearbox on the Suzuki is poor, but I think on the Honda, it's perfection. One of the criticisms with the Hornet was it was a little bit sort of snatchy, the throttle. It wasn't snatchy, it was just very direct and, you know, progressive. And you had to finesse it a little bit. But I think because that's a bigger, heavier bike, that's not so apparent because of the extra weight. So it's just, it's just left it quite a nice punchy sort of feel to it. I see, yeah, I'm with you. So on the Hornet, that was a criticism, but on this bike, because of the extra weight, it's sort of, yeah, I think the throttle response is, is lovely, really direct, does exactly what I wanted to do. It's not snatchy at all. Let's just hit the motorway briefly, just to test things like uh, wind protection. We've done it all in this test, haven't we? Doing the whole shebang. Because of the low screen on here, again, I think this is parking back to its off-road uh, credentials. It's got a small like, off-road screen on this. You can obviously get a bigger screen and the Honda has the optional touring screen. 
but I'm getting a lot of air on this, of course, because it's a very small screen. What's the Honda like, Greg? Bubble of calm. Bubble of calm. Yeah, it is a bubble of calm. It's, it's really nice. Virtually, you know, hardly any air on the legs. A little bit, but not comfortable. Just on the outside of the legs. Yeah, 65. 4,000 RPM at 68 miles an hour. It feels, yeah, it's cruising lovely in top gear. You're right on the legs, there's, there's not much on the legs either. Because I think that the Suzuki actually has a 20 litre tank, so it's got a bigger tank on the Suzuki. It's 17, I think it's 17 on the uh, trans out. No cruise control though, is there on these? No cruise control, and I don't think it's an option either. And I have sort of hustled this Suzuki quite a bit, and it's surprising how fast you can go on it. You know, you just got to put a bit of faith in the tyres because you get no feedback from the tarmac, do you? That, that's the thing. You just got to have faith that the tyres are, are doing their thing, but um, you can hustle them. And the brakes are pretty decent. I know we've criticised Suzuki's brakes before, but on this, I think they're, they're perfectly up to the job and there feels like a decent amount of bite as well. Completely agree. I jumped on the Suzuki thinking, oh, I won't have any brakes, and the brakes are very, very good. Yeah, I actually sort of bizarrely they're better than on the gsx s thousand the feel of them which is makes no sense you got more initial bite haven't you yeah, on this definitely. for sure i like the dash on the honda as well i think it's very nice i, I like them the, the dash on both because they've gone for a analog look with a tft and uh it's it's all so obvious what you're looking at really good yeah they've not tried to over stylize it which i think a few manufacturers make that mistake don't they and you know it's like oh it's a tft we've got to make it all funky and modern it's like no you don't <laughs> just make it clear and easy to read oh yeah she handles nicely this i have to say and they say you don't, you don't even have to avoid the potholes really or don't try too much to avoid them you, you can just roll over them yeah you see bums and think oh it's okay i'm just gonna go over it and it's absolutely happy day isn't it as you get a little bit older, it's so nice where there's just nothing going through my spine. It's just so comfortable. <laughs> the bad back, the bad back brigades. Well, yeah, no, it is though, isn't it? I, and they're so comfy. It's the BBB, isn't it? The bad back battle. I think we must be getting old, mate. <laughs> We're starting to enjoy these adventure bike things. Well, we could do a little bit of a, a, a roll-on test on this national road. So fourth, fourth gear. gear? F fourth gear. Fourth gear, 45, 45 miles an hour. Yeah. Hang on, let's get You do the count I'm not, in. I'm not at 45 yet. So, in three, two, one, go! Look at the power of Suzuki! The grunt! <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah, nothing in it. it. The Suzuki's got it in the mid-range though. It's got, it's got more grunt in the mid-range and, and you no. can feel that when you're riding it. Yeah, but that's Shush. with me on it as well though. You know how much oh, difference it makes true. with the weight and no, that's that with me true. on it. So with you on it, it's going to blitz it. We'll have to confirm that, but... I really like the pair of them actually. I think they're, they're very, very good and I defy anyone to actually try one and not also have a good time. Yeah, I think because these, these bikes are all new from the ground up, so this is like the latest technologies, manufacturing processes, design, you know, yeah. these, these these aren't old bikes rehashed, these are all new. And I think that's sort of why they're so good, isn't it? And that's why I think Definitely. Because I thought I was, I spent a bit more time on the Suzuki and I thought I was going to, it was going to trounce it, to be honest, but it's really impressed me, the trans out today, tonight. Me too, it, it definitely doesn't. Um, you know, they're, they're similar in lots of ways, but they've got different character and the riding positions are different. So I, I think actually you must try both if you're in the market for this sort of bike. And I, I don't think either are really better or worse than the other. It's just, I'm quite glad that the riding positions are different because it gives you a choice as a customer, which you prefer. Um, you know, I think if you commuted as a big part of your bike i think in my opinion the honda would be better suited to it because it's a little bit narrower the bars are narrower it'd be easier to filter but if you're going to do more you know sort of off-roady endurancey type riding i think the suzuki has it to be honest so it's not better or worse it's just slightly different isn't it yeah i think you've summed it up absolutely spot on there the suzuki's definitely got a bit more off we're on the hill climb by the way <laughs> these aren't really the bikes for the hill climb but just showing you that you can, you can, you know, you can hustle these things. And they handle so well, they're so well balanced, aren't they? And, you know, and even with that 21, it just glides around here. And you're not going to keep up with a sports bike. Well, maybe you will. <laughs> maybe you will. So enjoyable. Uh, and I think, as a, you know, this, these engines on the road, in the real world, they sound so lame. 
when you start talking about sort of 80 horsepower or something, don't they? Yeah, but, yeah, that's it. But, but in the real world, forget the spec sheets. They, they work perfectly well. Yeah, really nice amount of power, right where you want it. You know, and actually because they're quite engaging it's just just yeah it, they're, they're very very good very impressive definitely worth the money okay let's do it let's do a first gear first gear first gear it's a big heavy adventure bike it'll be fine what mode you got it in sport you're in sport i'm in a so we're in the same modes go on I'll let you do the counting yeah in three two one go Surprisingly close, the Suzuki picks up a little bit at the beginning and then the, the additional top end power of the Trans Alby starts to pull. This has definitely got more power in the mid range, for sure. Let's swap bikes, let's pull in here and swap bikes, do it again. The gearbox on the Honda, honestly, finding neutral is. is, is that, that's a lesson in gearboxes, that is, I tell you. It's <laughs> top notch. Top notch, literally, no pun intended. <laughs> Three, two, one, go! Yeah! <laughs> the Honda does it! I'm surprised, I'm really surprised. Let's do it, let's do a grunt test again this way round then. What was it? Fourth gear at four, fourth, gear. Th fourth gear at 35. Okay. Fourth gear at 35. Repeat the grunt test on different bikes. Are you ready? Go. Count it in. In three. In two, in one, go! Yeah, oh, definitely, yeah definitely more grunt in the mid-range on the Suzuki. And then the Honda starts to really start pulling about eight grand. The brakes are stronger on the Honda as well, I think. A little bit sharper on the Honda. There's a little bit more bite and there's less suspension dive as well because the suspension's a bit more road focused, isn't it? So the road manners are probably a little bit better. God, steering looks amazing on this, <laughs> absolutely amazing. So, you know, we've got to decide, we've got to choose which one we'd have. I don't know, God, I don't smell know. it. Matt, crash. <laughs> no, there's nothing, nothing to smell here. <laughs> nothing to smell here, officer. Nothing to, nothing smell, to smell, here. smell here. So both fantastic, really, really good. You know, we sort of said a bit more off-road focused on the Suzuki for sure. A bit more road focused on the Trans Out. Both fantastic. More power on the Trans Out. You know, it pulled away from the Suzuki big time there, didn't it? Yeah, it did. And in, in fairness, no offence intended, but you are heavier than I am as well, well aren't no, you? Exactly. But, you know. even, even when we swapped, it was you know, yeah, much exactly. closer. So the, the trans up's faster. I think the engine feels a bit more responsive anyway. Forget riding them, you know, as a roll-on like that. But, you know, it does feel a bit livelier, I think, is the word I would use. Um, the Suzuki's definitely more, you know, this is in relative terms, more off-road biased, I'd say. Wider bars, lovely riding position. I think the seat on the Suzuki is marginally better. Um, Again, it doesn't mean that the Honda is not good. It's just really incredibly comfortable on the Suzuki. Um, if I were to choose, though... What would you choose? That's, that's the, the question. question. Which, Which one well, would you if have? If I'm brutally honest, and I am a little bit surprised, I personally would choose the Honda. I would. I think it's... Um, for what I would use it for, you can still do a little bit of soft roading on it. Most of my riding would be on road. I think the road manners on it are unbelievably good. I think it's a great bike, and I think they're definitely onto something with that. And I actually really, really do genuinely like it. That would be my choice. And I think it, I think Honda do the plastics and all that a little bit better. Uh, I'm not sure I'd have it in that colour. I'd like to see the other colour options, but I think I would go for that. Okay, interesting. I think I'll take, I know it's seriously really predictable, but I, I think I'll take the Suzuki. I think I'll go Suzuki. I like the fact you can go a bit of off-road on that, and I've I've really enjoyed doing those little gravel lanes like that. I've really enjoyed it. And you, on the Trans Alp, it's fine, but you just feel, it feels easy on this. It's definitely easy on It that. feels I'm not just e doing that. And, it and is. You, you lose that little bit of like, oh, it's just like, I'm really enjoying this. I feel really comfortable. And I've really enjoyed that. And I think I'll take that because of that. And, and the road manners, there, there's not much in it, is there? No, 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 no. There's not, there's not much in it. And, and I do, without question, I agree. The Suzuki is definitely an easier bike to ride on the off-road stuff. There's no doubt about it. So if that is your bag, then I think the Suzuki definitely wins. Uh, and don't get me wrong, having chosen the Honda, I still think the Suzuki is a good bike and I think, you know, like the dashboard on the Suzuki, it, it, they've, it's, they've done a lovely job. It's got a fully adjustable suspension, which I'm not overlooking, oh, yeah, which the, the Honda true. doesn't. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, it's definitely got advantages, but 
I still think for me I'd pick the Honda and in base trim it's cheaper it is true yeah if you don't it, want any extras even, even with the extras it's probably still marginally cheaper probably, because yeah. the quick shift is 250 isn't it so it's probably still a little bit cheaper to be to be fair again not massive amounts i'm not saying that's the deciding factor so there you have it it doesn't really help the consumer but we've at least given you some opinions and i think you, you know you have to assess what you're going to use it for but definitely should try them they're good bikes really good so I hope that's been uh, of helpful to you. Uh, we do use these comparison videos quite often. We've got the comparison with the Street Triple and the 890 Duke. We've got the new Diavel versus the Rocket 3. What else have we done? We've done the old V-Strom versus the Africa Twin. I think actually now we need to do the Africa Twin versus the new V-Strom 1050 DE because they both because before the V-Strom had the smaller front wheel so we preferred it as a road yeah, bike. Yeah. Now yeah. we can take them maybe off road again. Now we're off road yeah. masters. Yeah. <laughs> we can off -road take the 1050 masters. and the Africa Twin similar sort of test. So uh, if that sounds of interest, don't forget to subscribe below and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers guys.